Oh 
Good morning. Good morning. There's something powerful about believing, amen? amen? And there's something about it when you say it, and there's something even more special about it when you sing it, and it just rises up within you. It's like a well, a well within your soul, and it's just such an amazing thing and a powerful and transforming thing to believe in the name of Jesus Christ. It's an amazing thing. Uh, as we got a prayer this morning, uh, we want to lift up, continue to lift up Jim. He is home and resting and recovering. So he wants the church to know that he is well and he's recovering and should be back within a few weeks, knowing Jim sooner than later. And um, so this Thursday night we will have Bible study and that will take two weeks off for the Christmas and New Year week and then we'll start fresh uh, after that. So this week and then we're off for two weeks and knowing Jim, he'll probably come back after those two weeks. So we'll keep the Sullivan family in your prayers as he continues to recover. Are there any other pressing prayer, prayer requests this morning? Guys, share. Little Philip, to pray for him, absolutely. Anyone else? Rebecca. Vaughn Husk is at home. home. Joanne Barry, we'll get to that. Debbie? Sherry Chapman has surgery tomorrow. Sherry Chapman with surgery tomorrow. Colonelectomy. And over here, Vince. Yes, Vince Chapman has surgery. Off the charts. Yeah, like 600 That's too high. Our God is an awesome God. Joe. Coming up pretty soon in January, getting the surgery for my, my new hip. January 14th. It's going to be here before we know it. Yes. My so. name is Boston, also to addiction and overdose. What's the name of the family? Just uh, Nixon. Nixon. The Nixon family in their law. Arden. 
17 months. Mr. Vega. Yeah, my mother -in -law. Brenda. That's Brenda. That's Brenda. We know Brenda. Brenda. Mm -hmm. I don't see her turn into me this morning. Anyone else? Let's look to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we have great needs this morning, but we lift up the name of Jesus. What a powerful thing it is to believe in Jesus Christ. So we thank you for just uh, the faith, the faith that you have given us as a gift. It's precious to us, and we know there was no merit of ours that we could ever do to receive such wondrous and glorious news as being children of God. So, Father, I just ask now that you would be just amongst your people. You've heard the request. They're numerous, and I can imagine all of the unspoken in the room this morning. In some measure, there's something weighing on every heart this morning. So, Father God, I just ask that you could minister and meet our needs through your glorious spoken word, the powerful word of God. And, Father, would you just help me as I stand here and deliver it, that you would enable this humbled servant and that you would just hold me up once again as I deliver such marvelous, glorious news and the gospel of the gift of your Son. So, Lord, there's nothing we could ever do to repay. But, Father God, we stand in all of what you have done on Calvary through your Son, and Lord, we just now look to him, look to the author and perfecter of our faith. And Father, may our faith just grow a little bit more this morning so that we can walk out of here with our heads held high, not because of what we have done, but because of what you have done and promised to do. Everlasting life is the destiny of every believer in this room this morning. I get cold chills just saying it. So we humbly thank you. And we humbly beseech you now that you could give us a good word this morning. A promising word, a little hope and a little encouragement. For it's in your precious and powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. So how do I start this sermon? I don't know, maybe a little bit of confession. I don't know how to do this. Um, recently, I guess I've told enough people now so I can tell a few more. I've taken on the hobby of, of Ubering. Yes, you've heard it, your pastor Ubers. <laughs> And I do it late at night, I do it a couple nights a week, and I do it uh, when my wife says, yes, you can go. Um, and I do it for a couple reasons. One is I get to take the money and give it away, and that's what I do. And the second reason is I get to practice my evangelism. Now, I've longed to be more evangelistic in my conversations, not just talk about the weather, your favorite team, what life is dealing with you, but really dealing with the serious issues of eternal life. Because if you ask people in general, what I found that is, do you believe in God, is the simple reduced question with the answer of yes. I found that out. A Gallup poll says 87% of the people question with the simple question, is there a God? Do you believe in this God? The answer is yes. But that drops tremendously when you start adding in what we believe. Just add number two. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is God. You find a, a huge disparagement. Now, you find an almost insulting statement to most of the people who believe in a God. So now I've challenged and been challenged multiple times. I have story after story after story because I get to every person that steps in that car. I wait for the Spirit to give me the right things to say. In fact, this church should be packed with all the people I've offered to come out to church who don't attend church. It really should be. Because they, they get the news, they understand it, they even sob and cry in my car, and yet... Life goes on. It just doesn't really matter. So there's no doubt, when asked if they believe in God, the short answer, yep, got that belief down. The highest level of belief comes from that simple question, do you believe in God? But many, many that I found out, when we add all of, not even the, all of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father, his son, Jesus Christ. After that, forget it. You've lost them. In fact, it becomes not even understandable anymore to the point of explain. I'll hear you out. 
So one thing that Kenny said this morning is the song, I believe in God the Father, I believe in Jesus. Well, that was the creed, but the song of For God So Loved the World, that song in two formats have been stuck in my head the last three weeks. One was the cantata that I sang way long ago. I won't sing it to you now for the sake of your ears. And the second one is the current one by Hillsong, that one, I believe, uh, For God So Loved the World. In fact, it's the greatest verse in the Bible, if I could have.